Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. In this series of biology lessons, we shall deal with the human digestive system. Moving on to the human digestive system. So, what do you know about human digestive system? So, generally, the food which is taken through the mouth enters the oral cavity. So, from this oral cavity, it passes through pharynx and the esophagus. Esophagus is also called as the food pipe. So, through the food pipe, it enters the stomach. And we also have the liver on the right side of the stomach and the left side we have the pancreas and it enter from the stomach it enters the small intestine after the small intestine it enters the large intestine and from the large intestine the fecus or the waste material will be excreted out through the anus. So this is the human digestive system on the picture we shall deal with it now in detail. So during the digestion process the bichroma bio macro molecules like carbohydrates fats proteins so what are these carbohydrates so these are the complex molecules they must be broken into simpler molecules such as glucose so carbohydrates must be converted into glucose fats into fatty acids and glycerol proteins must be converted into amino acids so these are the simple molecules the food must be broken down into simple molecules so this is the digestion process in actual so first we have the alimentary canal the foot passes through a continuous canal called alimentary canal so what does this canal includes so it has various compartments the first is the buccal cavity the next is foot pipe or esophagus next is stomach next is small intestine the large intestine ending in the rectum and the next is the anus these are the six components of the alimentary canal all of them are called as bulkly called as the elementary canal so the activities of the gastrointestinal tract are under neural and hormonal control for proper coordination of the different parts so how this uh, gastrointestinal tract elementary canal they are under neural and hormonal control particularly by the brain the sight smell or the presence of food in the oral cavity can stimulate the secretion of saliva Okay, the salivary glands are secreted when the sight, smell or presence of food is made. Next, gastric and intestinal secretions are also similarly stimulated by neural signals. The muscular activities of different parts of the elementary canal can also be moderated by the neural mechanism, particularly by the brain. The buccal cavity or oral cavity. The first part of the elementary canal is the buccal cavity or the oral cavity. It consists of the teeth, the tongue and the saliva which is secreted by the salivary glands. Next, the process of taking food into the body is called ingestion. The first is when you take the food from outside to the inside of the body through your buccal cavity, it is called ingestion. Ingestion happens through the mouth. The mouth leads to the buccal cavity or the oral cavity. Our mouth has a salivary glands which secretes saliva. The saliva breaks down the first, this is the breakdown, this is the first function. The saliva breaks down the starch into sugars. Okay. So this is the saliva glands. You can see these are the saliva glands. They secrete saliva and first function is the saliva first. At first it will break down the starch into sugars. The oral cavity has a number of teeth and a muscular tongue. So first the teeth after they touch the saliva, sorry the food which touch the saliva then the teeth will take the action, the, we chew our food or not. So some part, some of the complex molecules is broken down into at least some smaller molecules. Each tooth is embedded in a socket of jawbone. An adult human has 32 permanent teeth which are of four different types. The incisors, canines, premolars and molars. I will show you the figure. So here is the, so we have 2 plus 2, 4 incisors only one uh, canine on the other side also we have one more canine so two canines two premolars on one side so four premolars and we have uh, three molars so six molars okay three on one side on three on the other side yes or no moving on to the foot pipe or esophagus 
the foot pipe. So 16 plus 16, I think you can see here, 16 plus 16 will be 32. Total 32, 16 on one side, 16 on other side. Next. Foot pipe or ESO figures. The oral cavity leads into a short pharynx, which serves as a common passage for the foot. Okay, the ESO figures and the trachea, that is windpipe, open into the pharynx. A cartilaginous flap called epiglottis prevents the entry of food into the glottis during swallowing. Okay, well actually we have windpipe as well as food pipe. When you talk while you are eating, some of the food may enter the food pipe. That's why you get the hiccups. Right? Yes or no? Generally, when the food comes to the mouth, the food pipe will be opened. But when you talk during the food pipes, the air due to the respiration the windpipe may open and you get the hiccups okay this is called the epiglottis opening of the windpipe glottis the swallowed food passes into the food pipe through esophagus i've already told you this is a food pipe the esophagus is a thin long tube which extends posteriorly passing through the neck thorax the part of the body of mammal between the neck and abdomen and diaphragm separates the thorax from the abdomen and leads to a j-shaped bag called stomach so after passing through the foot pipe it enters the stomach the j-shaped bag like structure called stomach and mucus in saliva helps in lubricating and othering the masticated food that is broken food particles in bo into a bolus the bolus is then conveyed into the pharynx and then into the esophagus by swallowing so food enters in the esophagus by swallowing after we spew, chew some of the food. The bolus further passes down through the esophagus by successive waves of contractions called peristalsis. The gastroesophageal sphincter controls the passage of food into the stomach. This is not much needed for us. So moving on to the stomach. The inner lining of this, hope you know the shape of the stomach. This is the shape of the stomach right the inner lining of the stomach secretes mucus hcl and digestive system this is the inner lining which protects the stomach it secretes mucus hcl hydrochloric acid and digestive juices the mucus protects the lining of the stomach this is very important the acid which is secreted by the inner lining kills many bacteria that enter the along with the food and makes the medium in the stomach acidic so because of the hcl that is hydrochloric acid present in the stomach which is secreted by the inner lining of the stomach the stomach is acidic in nature the digestive juices which is secreted by again this is the first one mucus second is hcl and the third is digestive juices we break down the proteins into simpler substance i've told you the first function is saliva breaks starch into sugars the second is here in the stomach the digestive juice breakdowns the proteins into the amino acids i've already told you earlier right next this is the stomach this is our esophagus or food pipe so this is these are the some of the parts of this stomach okay this is the inner lining of stomach which secretes mucus digestive juices hydrochloric acid right the hydrochloric acid uh, which is not useful which will it will come out through the mouth while you take your brushing in the morning right the hydrochloric acid will come out of the mouth or the nose liver the liver is a reddish brown gland situated in the upper part of the ab abdomen on the right side Generally, for a human, it is a right side. We see from outside, it is left, but it is the right side of the. And remember, it is the largest gland of the body, and it secretes bile juice that is stored in a sac called gallbladder. So, gallbladder stores the bile juice, which is secreted by the liver. Liver is the largest gland in the body. It is reddish brown in color. And the bile plays an important role in the digestion of fats. Okay, saliva has broken down the starch into sugars. Digestive juice has broken down the proteins into the amino acids. And fats are digested by the bile juice which is secreted by the 
liver the bile secreted by the hepatic cells passes through the hepatic ducts and is stored and concentrated in thin muscular sac called the gallbladder i have already told you the bile is stored in the gallbladder the duct of gallbladder along with the hepatic duct from the liver forms the common bile duct and the bile duct and the pancreatic duct open together into the duodenum as the common hepatic pancreatic duct which is guarded by a sphincter called the sphincter of odi is not much needed next moving on to the pancreas the pancreas is a large cream colored cream colored gland located just below the stomach above the stomach we have liver on to the right side of the stomach or right side of the human body and to the left side below the stomach it is pancreas pancreatic juice acts on carbohydrates and proteins and changes them into simpler forms this is the want we want right the digestion process okay and pancreas also secretes insulin hope you know about them if we lack insulin it results diabetes yes or no yes the partly digested food now reaches the lower part of the small intestine after pancreas it reaches the small intestine where the intestinal juice completes the digestion of all components of the food so final completion of digestion is done in the small intestine the pancreas is a compound elongated organ situated between the limbs of the u shaped duodenum the exocrine portion secretes an alkalinic alkaline pancreatic juice containing enzymes and endocrinic portion secret hormones insulin and glucagon these are the secretions done by pancreas moving on to the small intestine small intestine is a distinguishable into three regions a c shaped duodenum a long coiled middle portion jejunum and a highly coiled ileum these are three regions in small intestine and small intestine is highly coiled highly coiled you know right what is coiling and is about 5 meters long it receives secretion from the liver and the pancreas besides it also its wall also secretes some juices for the breaking of complex molecules into small molecules the digested food passes into the blood so the digested food passes into the blood in the wall of the intestine this process is called as absorption so in the small intestine the food enters the blood okay the digested food this process is called as absorption remember this is very important the inner walls of the small intestines have thousand of finger like outgrowths they are called as villi singular it is called as villus the villi increase the surface area for the absorption of more digested food okay next the absorbed substances are transported by the blood vessels to different organs of the body where they are used to build complex substances such as the proteins required by the body this is called as assimilation okay ingestion digestion absorption assimilation in the cells glucose breaks down with the help of oxygen into carbon dioxide and water this happens in the cells after the digested food comes to the cells from small intestine and the energy is released so this energy will be used for the various works done by the human the food that remains undigested and un unabsorbed then enters into the large intestine this is called ejection we'll see now the large intestine is wider and shorter than small intestine so small intestine is larger than large intestine remember this it is around 5 meters and large intestine is only 1.5 meters its function is to absorb water and some salts okay from the undigested food material the remaining waste passes to the rectum and remains there as semi solid fecus and the fecal is removed through the anus from time to time this is called ejection so ingestion next is digestion next is absorption by the small intestine next is assimilation and next is ejection the undigested food comes out through the anus and what are the disaster uh, sorry disorders of digestive system the inflammation of the intestinal tract is the most common element due to bacterial or viral infection this is the most common inflammation 
or the bulging out of intestinal tract. The infections are also caused by the parasites of the intestine like tapeworm, roundworm, hookworm, pinworm, etc. And jaundice. The liver is affected because of jaundice, skin, eyes turn yellow due to the deposit of bile pigments. Okay. And vomiting it is a ejection of stomach contents to the mouth. This reflex action is controlled by the vomit center in the medulla of the brain. A feeling of nausea precedes vomiting. You will feel some like uh, to vomit. Yes or no? That is called nausea. And next is diarrhea. Then diarrhea, jaundice, etc. More frequent in children. The abnormal frequency of bowel movement. Right? Those who have improper bowel movements or ejection. An increased liquidity of the fecal discharge is known as diarrhea. It reduces the absorption of food. And constipation, you write, it constipation, the fecus are retained within the rectum as the bowel movements occur irregularly. This is called constipation. And indigestion, you know, right, uh, the food is not properly digested, leading to feeling of fullness. The cause of indigestion are. Uh, Inadequate enzyme secretion, anxiety, food poisoning, overeating, and spicy food. These are the reasons for indigestion. These are some of the disorders of digestive system. So, hope you have learned enough things in the human digestive system. I'll meet you in the next topics. Thank you.